Do you know SpongeBob's at least 45 years old? He's still in boating school. How is that possible? He ages throughout the entire series. By the time the movie rolls around, SpongeBob gets nominated for Employee of the Month. And in his room, it shows SpongeBob's one Employee of the Month 374 months in a row. Jeez. That's 31 years. And from SpongeBob's license, we see that he's only 14 years old. When he starts working at the Krusty Krab? Right, in the, like, the first season. So that means by the time the movie rolls around, it's been 31 years. <laughs> oh my god! He's still working at the Krusty Krab. That's insane. As a 45-year-old sponge. Hey, I can't believe he still has that enthusiasm every day for work, working as a fast food fry cook. Yeah. And he still didn't win Employee of the Month. Or get his boating license. <laughs> wonder how old Gary is. Well, Gary has some darker secrets than SpongeBob, I'll tell you that. What? Gary isn't an ordinary snail. He comes from another planet. Gary the snail? Yeah. He comes from some weird alien snail planet where his parents are actually the rulers, which makes Gary the prince of this planet. What are you talking about? <laughs> so this is Gary's real origin story. It was initially going to be the story for the SpongeBob movie Sponge on the Run. And they made the concept art for it, but then they scrapped it just for the story to be Gary getting kidnapped. So Gary's royalty? On a different planet. That explains why he acts so differently compared to other snails. I mean, he has a music player underneath his shell. It's pretty evolved. He can communicate well with the other fish. He even at certain points has hands and feet come out of his body. Really? I missed this. Like an alien. When he goes to eat, he has his arms holding a fork and knife. Oh, I kind of remember that actually. Yeah. He does. And he has all these different things under his shell, even a house. Something's up with Gary, and that origin story may explain it all. In the next one, we're exposing Plankton. Jeez, I feel like Plankton's got so much to him. Did you ever notice how every single fish in Bikini Bottom is clothed? They either have a shirt or pants or both. Yeah. Every single one except for Plankton. Plankton's naked. <laughs> yeah. So how is he allowed to just walk around like that? Yeah, it's indecent exposure. Well, I figured out he's not actually naked. That green body is actually a body suit. In one episode, they show that when Plankton takes a bath or gets dressed, his natural color is pink. And he goes to put on his clothes and it's just a rack of his green body suits. Oh, what? He has the exact same outfit for every day of the week. It's those green body suits that we know Plankton to be. And he wears one of those every single day. And in one episode, they show Karen bathing and changing him, and she puts one of those on him. He's just pink? He's just pink. He's not really naked in all of the shows. I wonder why he chooses green. To make up for the one thing that he doesn't have? What? Money. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems he's got money. He's making all the making all those inventions. Yeah, made Karen. Yeah, he just wants that formula. I always forget that Plankton invented Karen, but yet they're like a couple. <laughs> I know. Like, what is that? <laughs> it's such a weird relationship. It's like that movie Her. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Plankton in a computer is like the only relationship in SpongeBob. Like, they had the opportunity for so many different ones. Did you know SpongeBob and Sandy got married? Like, they're married in the show. What? I thought officially. they were... I thought they were just friends. No, officially. They're married now. What did I miss? In a flashback in the episode Truth or Square, it shows SpongeBob and Sandy at a ceremony getting married by a priest. But at the end of the flashback, it's revealed that it's just a play that's going on. <laughs> but, but the priest didn't know and says he didn't know it was a play. So that means... The priest actually married them, officially. Yeah, that's technically official. If he didn't know about it. Right, they said their vows, they said I do, and the priest uh, made it formal, made it official. Right, so that means that they're actually married. And when Spongebob revealed it, they all freaked out, even though they were all at the play. So they were kind of hinting at Spongebob and Sandy being official, officially married. Legally, at least. <laughs> yeah. Spongebob's low-key kind of deep sometimes. It's very weird. Yeah, there's a lot to it. They'll just randomly throw in these super emotional moments. Yeah, did you know Mr. Krabs and Plankton are, like, best friends since childhood? But they're mortal enemies. They are now. But back in the day, when they were growing up, they were in preschool together. 
They were they saved each other's lives multiple times. Oh my gosh. And they would beat up bullies. They'd trick them with their schemes. They are both conniving. That makes sense. But obviously, when they got older, that jealousy fueled in plankton, getting envious of crabs. And they grew apart. But I still think they're like really close friends because when plankton ends up giving up and turning his chum bucket into like a knickknack shop, Mr. Krabs doesn't believe him at first. But plankton convinces him that he was just done. And he gave up. He's moving on to a new business. So to make it up to him, Mr. Krabs ends up giving him the secret formula. What? Mr. Krabs would never do that. Yep, handed it right to him in a bottle. And later he goes home and he calls Plankton and gives him an emotional message saying he's sorry and that he doesn't mean to hurt someone so close to him. Damn. But then it's revealed Plankton made that entire scheme just to get the secret formula. <laughs> and when Plankton opens up the secret formula note, it says, gotcha, <laughs> with a heart. That's just friendly competition right there. Right, and it shows Krabs and Plankton still do like each other. All right, let's get into a quiz now. Which is the correct way to spell this Pokemon? Onyx. Oh, man. Uh, I feel like it could be either way. O-N-I-X. That is correct. It's a Mandela effect. Everyone thinks it's O-N-Y-X, but it's O-N-I-X official. Really? I always remember I remember it as O-N-I-X. There was one episode of Pokemon that accidentally spelled it O-N-Y-X. But other than that, that is the official spell. Ghastly. G-H-A-S-T-L-Y. Incorrect. G what? G-A-S-T-L-Y. You're telling me there's no H in there? There's no H, even though he's a ghost. That's why everyone puts the H in there. You sure about that? With the H is an actual word. Without the H is the Pokemon. Damn. Ninetales. N-I-N-E-T-A-L-E-S. Correct. Even yes. though it has nine tails, it's not that way. Yeah, I've seen that Pokemon card so many times. Politoed. P O L I. T-O-E-D. Correct. Yes. It is not like the animal toad. Yeah, I remember that. And lastly, Feraligator. Oh my god. This one's always been tough. F-E-R-A-L Feral Feral I I G A T R. I know there's no O. No O, because there was a 10 character limit in Pokemon Silver and Gold. Oh wow, that's the reason? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I love classic Pokemon, though. Might be my favorite thing there is. Yeah, first generation Pokemon, and then the first season of the Pokemon series for me. Yeah, even second gen and third gen were great. Yeah, I fell off after third. Yeah, after the third generation, it just got too much. If they just stuck with those three generations, built off of that, with those Pokemon, that core, would have been great. <laughs> yeah, because they started intertwining the original generations, and it always made no sense to me why Ho-Oh was in the first season, yet was Generation 2 in the second game. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was supposed to be, like, a, one of the original legendaries, and then they just placed him in the second group. Yeah, I guess they didn't have space for him in the first game. They had Ash see Ho-Oh in the show, because anyone that sees Ho-Oh gets granted a wish. Really? Yeah, that's what the legend says. And so, the theory goes that Ash made a wish to have a never-ending journey, a never-ending Pokemon journey, so that he can always be happy. So that's why Ash never ages. <laughs> he does never age, that's true. And his journey has been long. Right, and that's why he was never able to win the Pokemon series until he ends up seeing Ho-Oh again way later in the series, and they say he makes another wish to actually win the championship is his new wish. And so when he ends up winning the championship in the end of the show, his journey comes to an end. But, supposedly Ash is coming back, so maybe the, the wish isn't over. There's going to be a third Ho-Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll start off with another Ho-Oh flying by. I always thought that was a shiny Ho-Oh. It's the color of a shiny Ho-Oh, but apparently it's not. Because in the remake, the remake movie of, like, the first season, they showed it as a regular Ho-Oh. But in the first episode, the original episode, it's like a gold Ho-Oh. The future of Mario games is going to be crazy. Like, they just finished up the Mario Kart Booster Pass... So they gotta be working on a new Mario Kart for the new system. So I'm gonna be excited for that one. Yeah, I heard there was rumors that there's already 
a new Mario Kart in the works. I actually heard this theory about Mario Kart. The Escape Pod guys mentioned it on their podcast. I've never heard of them. They do like Marvel movies and stuff like that, but it was briefly mentioned. It just lit a light bulb, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's exactly it. Did you know Mario Kart is just instilling socialism into children? What? With their power-ups. Think about how the power-up system works in Mario Kart. Random. No, they aren't random. The worse place you're in, the better items you get. Think about it. You're in first, second, third. You're getting banana peels. You're getting green shells. Yeah. You start moving back. You start getting some red shells. You start getting some mushrooms. And that then all of a sudden, bill. yeah, you're in last place. You're getting a bullet bill, a free pass to the top. And then the blue shell, it's basically taking down the 1%. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah. you're attacking first place. It's just all the infrastructure of socialism in a video game. Mario's Italian. I mean, I will say the game plays pretty well. Yeah, maybe it works. It's a joke. <laughs> we gotta say stuff's a joke now, because people just believe everything's real. Yeah, especially on TikTok, sarcasm is undetected by the comments. Everyone says, like, Mr. Beast videos aren't real. I find that hard to believe with all the people that are involved in his videos. You'd figure that would leak by now. Yeah, I thought that too until I watched his most recent one. Did you see that? Mr. Beast spent seven days buried alive in a coffin. <laughs> what? No, I didn't see that. A whole week he sat there underneath dirt, buried in a coffin, just himself. Did he have food, water? He had some, like, ramen packets and bottles to pee in. But he went seven days without pooping. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> or maybe he did. <laughs> I mean, he said he was holding it in the whole time. How could you do that for a week? I don't know, if you don't get many nutrients into your body, you don't have really anything to get out of there. Ramen noodles? <laughs> He's not pissing out ramen. Man, I don't know, some people just have control like that. God, he's gotta win an award for something. <laughs> That's insane. How long do you think you could last? Maybe five minutes. I would get crazy. Oh, yeah, that's true. In a coffin, I'd get crazy claustrophobia, claustrophobia there. And then my mind would just be going like, what if they actually can't get me out after the seven days? I could go maybe a day if there was big money involved. That's the thing, too. Like, Mr. Beast is already rich. <laughs> like, what is driving him to do this? Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I'd be done. <laughs> So the last thing I want to do is spend a week. You know, he almost could have died from that, from blood clots in his legs for not standing for a week. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, he must be like a psychopath. No way you're doing that if you're already a billionaire. At this point, I feel like there's going to be a documentary made about Mr. Beast with the stuff that he's done. Oh, yeah. He's on Joe Rogan at 23. I can't imagine what's going to happen in the next 23 years. He already made his own fast food place, his own chocolate bar. He's probably going to get... I TV shows? He's going to lean into, like... Those kids' YouTube TV shows where it's like animated Mr. Beast. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Like a Meat Canyon episode. Oh, you know who just got their own TV show? Who? Rey Mysterio, the wrestler. What? He doesn't even show his face. Not a regular TV show, a cartoon. It's an animated TV show on Cartoon Network about Rey Mysterio. Really? Yeah, it's on Cartoon Network, on HBO Mask, and it's Rey Mysterio just basically being a superhero, fighting off <laughs> evil villains. Is he still a wrestler? Oh yeah, he's wrestling and then it goes over the top with like fights in the street and everything. He's the new Samurai Jack. Is he like top dog in WWE now? He's certainly one of the most popular. I feel like you need to get like a crazy personality for, for like a show like that to work. Rey Mysterio doesn't have that, but he has, like, a distinct look. Then in the show, like, they can make his personality whatever they want. Like, he can go crazy. What sucks, though, is that it's going to be all in Spanish. So you're not going to understand a word Rey is speaking. Oh, you're serious? Yeah, it's a Spanish TV show. He goes, like, booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> Maybe like Donnie from Thornberries. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> just screaming. Do you know why Donnie can't speak? Speak properly. No. Why? He was raised by orangutans. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's actually kind of a sad story. His parents were with him out in the forest on a trip, and they saw an orangutan hunter hunting down a chimpanzee, and they stopped him from doing it, and the orangutan hunter literally killed his parents. Oh, my God. Yeah, so he had to get adopted by the orangutans. They took him in for his parents saving him. Jeez, so he's the real Tarzan. So that's why he can't speak. He, he speaks, speaks orangutan. <laughs> not even. I don't even think the orangutans can understand him. Even Eliza can't understand him, and she speaks animal 
and human. So it's like some form of gibberish. It's just Donny language. Man, you know, I never realized how similar his backstory is to Tarzan. But he's like a really original character. Like that show wasn't even popular, but everybody still knows who Donnie is. Yeah, usually they just have archetypes for characters in each cartoon, and then they use the same episode ideas, but that one was kind of out of the box. For instance, you know what happened in every 90s and 2000s sitcom? What? A pool hustle episode. Every single one? Just about. I remember it in Drake and Josh. Yeah, Drake and Josh is the most recent one when they hustle them out of when they hustle them playing pool. But in Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Uncle Phil pulls out Lucille and hustles these guys that have been bullying Carlton. Even in Full House, Danny hustles Joey and Jesse when they're playing pool. Oh yeah. And all these shows are supposed to like teach a lesson, but I don't understand what the lesson is with this pool hustle episode. Are they teaching you how to hustle people? Or are they like teaching you to avoid being hustled when you're playing pool? <laughs> like it's so specific. Yeah, I think it's just interesting. I guess it's just part of that time where everyone was playing pool at bars and stuff. Yeah, that was like the thing to do. No technology. Right, now it's going to be like hustling people playing Fortnite. Yeah, or crypto. <laughs> crypto. Do you still have crypto? I do. I'm still holding on to oh. my XRP. Oh my gosh. It's coming one day. That's fool's gold right there. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like crypto. So I've been... I can just use it for gambling so easily. Yeah, all the sites have it set up for an easy transfer that way. Oh, you know... There's some new Simpsons predictions. The new predictions just dropped? Yeah. I feel like they're batting a thousand at this point. One comes to fruition like every week. For the 2026 World Cup, it shows in an episode recently, it's supposed to be Portugal versus Mexico in the 2026 World Cup. Ronaldo's final World Cup. Wow, right after Messi wins one? Ronaldo's supposed to get there. Wow, the story writes itself right there. Kind of like seems set up. It's like too good to be true. Right. It's like a WWE storyline. There's another new one that Ivanka Trump is running for president in 2028. They're going to try to keep the Trump legacy in the White House. So that means maybe Trump wins 2024 if they're going to try and run on that legacy. It was Homer, too, who was wearing the patch. And in 2025, there's supposed to be another environmental disaster. Kind of like COVID, but environmental. Like a meteor? No, it's probably be like global warming or something crazy like that or some outbreak some crazy flood maybe yeah maybe chemicals rise from the ground because it was from the simpsons movie so that one's got to be legit oh yeah they put the big bubble the dome they had the dome that's right yeah that was like symbolizing like flat earth like we're in a dome apparently oh i forgot to ask did you see five nights at freddy's yet no i've never gone into that yeah me either i heard mixed reviews like the diehard fans like think it's a great tribute, but people that know nothing about it are like, it's terrible. But the one thing that I did see, I was not expecting to see Matthew Lillard in Five Nights at Freddy's. Who's that? You don't know Matthew Lillard? No. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Oh, the voice? No. Shaggy from the movie Scooby-Doo. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's like a horror icon, supposedly. But I only know him as Shaggy. I've never seen him in anything else. But that may be a bad thing because his Shaggy performance was supposedly bad. Yeah, I don't think the movie got good reviews. Well, the OG Shaggy actually reamed him out. For what? For his performance. Really? In the Looney Tunes back to action movie, Matthew Lillard is having dinner with animated Shaggy and Shaggy's yelling at him. Oh, the actual cartoon. Yeah, Shaggy's yelling at Matthew Lillard for portraying him as a goof. Aren't they both goofs? Well, Shaggy doesn't want to be portrayed that way. So if the OG Shaggy can't put his stamp of approval on Matthew Lillard, neither can I. 